it's your favorite reliability building test guy and I'm here to share another video with you. This current video is on Halt and Haas testing. I hope you like this video and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Alright, let's get started. In this video, we will learn about Halt and Haas testing. Again, my name is Tom Resch, and if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. In this video, we will define Halt and Haas. We will discover the benefits of Halt and Haas testing. And we will also learn how to develop Halt and Haas test profiles for your product. Below is a high level summary that highlights the process from requirements to test reporting and test results. In this video, we will cover a component of the verification and validation plan, which is Halt and Haas test development. Let's go ahead and define Halt. What is Halt? Halt is highly accelerated life testing. It is a tool used to determine the lower and upper operating limits and the lower and upper destruct limits for your product or system. It is used during the engineering and design verification and validation stages. It is typically broken up into four steps. The temperature step stress, rapid temperature cycling, vibration step stress, and combined vibration over rapid temperature cycling. The bottom right hand of the screen displays the parameters that we are trying to determine or confirm for our design. The intent of HALT is testing is used to determine how much margin your design has compared to your product specifications and requirements. It is also referred to as design margin testing, and it can be ran with a sample size as little as one test specimen or unit per test step. Let's go ahead and define HAAS. So what is HAAS? Haas is highly accelerated stress screening. Haas testing is used during the production phase of the product life cycle to screen for process defects during system level or product assembly level phase. It can also be implemented at suppliers as part of an ongoing reliability activity on PCBAs, sensors, and other electronic components and sub-assemblies. Now, for products that are too large to apply this type of testing, you can implement Haas, as just stated, into, into your supplier uh, ongoing reliability testing for your components and sub-assemblies. Below is a high-level process that shows how Haas is integrated into a production process to weed out defective parts workmanship issues, and manufacturing equipment-induced process issues. Let, so what are the benefits of integrating HALT and HAAS into your product lifecycle? And why are these testing tools highly recommended? Well, number one, it rapidly helps you learn the limitations and weaknesses of your design. It is used to reduce design, process, and corrective action activities for design robustness characteristics of a design. It helps reduce development time and costs. It indirectly impacts mean time to failure or mean time to repair. It reduces warranty costs and degradation of a company's brand equity. It is used to find latent defects during production. And it is used to help reduce test time as compared to a traditional stress screen and production test program. In item 4, I state that Halt and Haas indirectly impact MTTF or MTTR. What is meant by this is that you cannot use these tests to predict reliability of your product in the field due to the limited sample size and methodology and approach used for this testing. However, integrating HALT and Haas into your development and production process will ensure your product will survive during its operational life with HALT and you will drastically reduce defective products from ending up in your customer's hands by implementing a Haas screening process, which, as part of an overall reliability and validation test plan, will help you improve your field MTTF or MTTR 
Uh, so keep in mind, you cannot simply use MTTF or MTTR metrics by themselves, and they need to be tied to a reliability and confidence percentage. We will go into this in more detail in a later video on reliability and Weibull analysis. The diagram on the right side summarizes the benefits of adding HALT and HAAS to a robust reliability and validation testing plan by helping to reduce both warranty and brand equity costs. So how do we develop a HALT test for a specific product? Immediately, I must warn you that there is not a single plug and play profile for HALT testing on any product. You must develop a HALT profile specifically around your product's requirements. You need to determine the electrical and functional parameters and requirements that will be utilized for the HALT testing. One option is to run the PCBA or electronic devices at max loads with zero D rating. What you are doing by implementing this strategy is that you're combining the electrical and thermal stress generated by the electronics device itself with the ambient temperature conditions that you are simulating in the hall chamber. Option two is to have a functional test only to ensure that the device is fully operational at the end of a soak or vibration stress step. Keep in mind, you should include a functional test step in your HALT program, regardless of whether or not you perform an electrical stress test in combination with the HALT temperature tests. This is to ensure that you detect abnormalities that help indicate when you have reached your product's operational and failure limits. At a minimum, you should power on your product and have it run at least idle in an idle state along with performing a functionality check to make sure all functions of a product are still operational at the end of each temperature and vibration step. As touched upon earlier, more complex or larger systems or products should have HALT integrated into the subsystem testing strategy rather than at the system or full product level. Below is the flow of the HALT test sequence. This is a typical approach to determining design margin for products. However, the soak time for each temperature step in test 1, the number of rapid cycles in test 2, the dwell time for, vibration, for the vibration stress step in test 3, and the total number of cycles for test 4 need to be custom tailored for your product based on the acceleration and fatigue factors determined based on your product's environmental and mechanical requirements and the operational life requirements for your product. Here's an example of HALT profiles that are used for HALT testing. I have intentionally kept axes and numerical data off of these graphs, as I do not want you to make the mistake of taking these arbitrary profiles and using them for your product. If you need help on developing a HALT profile, feel free to reach out to me at one of the links below. How do you develop a Haas test for your product? Your Haas profile should be built around the limits that you identified for your vibration limits, cold temperature limits, and hot temperature limits that you found in HALT. The number of cycles and duration need to be developed based on driving out latent defects while minimizing degradation to your product as it will be sold to a customer. I highly recommend that you consider adding a lower vibe level step and a sl slower temperature transition step to the end of your test when you perform your post Haas functional test to check for intermittent defects and failures. The reason for this is after the accelerated stresses when you apply, that you applied with rapid temperature changes and elevated vibration levels, the lower vibration excitation and slower temperature transition or ramp rate will allow you to detect intermittent failures more easily as would occur in the real world or out in the field after years of usage at a slower temperature transition and actual operational vibration exposure level. 
The key takeaways from this video are Halt and Haas are valuable test and screening tools to implement into a product development life cycle. Halt and Haas help indirectly increase MTTF and MTTR. Halt and Haas profiles must be custom tailored to your product. One more comment, as I always want to emphasize in all of my videos, creating a robust reliability and validation plan is imperative to helping your company reduce warranty costs and maintain or even improve the brand equity of your company. Adding Halt and Haas to your overall robust test plan will help your company achieve this goal. If you need help on building your Halt and Haas test programs or developing your reliability and validation test plan, feel free to reach out to me at one of the links below. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me at one of the links below. Thanks again for watching.